Welcome to my solo show at Target Gallery. Hi, I'm Taiwa Go. I'm a pre-maker and installation artist, what I like to call pre-installation. Pre-installation combines making installation art with hand photo prints so that traditional pre-making becomes sculpture. At first glance, it seems like I simply used ready-made paper party bowl in the shape of honeycombs. But if you look closely, you can see that I had printed, cut, and formed each component of the paper structures. My art doesn't conform to a frame. I push the boundaries of traditional pre-making from two-dimensional images on paper to three-dimensional sculpture installation. In this way, the space is transformed to have a more dynamic relationship with the viewer. My work process consists of three phases. First, printing. Second, making three-dimensional pieces. And third, planning and assembling the whole composition. I start drawing by hand illustrations of shapes and patterns that resemble biological forms like a human body cells or bacteria. Then I scan the images, edit them, and screen print them on Korean mulberry paper, which is a very thin but strong paper. After the image is printed, I melt beeswax onto the paper, which not only stiffens it, but also makes it uh, translucent. The translucency is important because when you make three-dimensional things, you have to show the images on the back side and front side. After the paper is waxed, the patterns are then not just the images on the surface anymore. They become part of the paper itself, integrated into the art's DNA. I found this very fascinating. After repeating this process several times to create multiple images, I then paste them together with glue or sew them together to create the three-dimensional object. It is almost like a building up a vocabulary of images to make complete sentences and phrases. After I make the individual pieces, I research the gallery site and simulate the installation by making several sketches and trials in my own studio space. And finally, I combine them together at the gallery. I sketch a lot. I often find inspiration in medical or scientific illustration books. I've even found inspiration in my daughter's high school biology textbook. Sketching is always the best tool to plan a site-specific installation. Let's look at the each piece closer. The first piece we are looking is asymmetric arrangement. At the Target Gallery, my most recent pre-installation, I play a lot with the floristry and flower arrangement. Flower arrangement used to be one of my mom's favorite activities, and I always observed her when I was younger. Flower arrangement is essentially humans forcing their rigid order onto organically grown plants, but this only results in an unnatural monstrous entity. To reflect this perpetual tension between nature and human desire, my installation corrupts an aesthetic or floral appeal with the use of industrial materials such as PVC, plexiglass, pipes, and cement. It is an organic shape with the pipes sticking out of it. But this is not only the dichotomy I'm focusing on. I hope that when you walk around this biomorphic paper installation, you feel not only the tension between nature and civilization, but also the contrast between microscopic and macroscopic, cellular and large, inside and outside, untamed and domestic. The color of the ink I use is also double-edged. It is bright and tropical, but it is artificial, like a toxic fluorescent neon light. More especially, here I use a very bright orange color as a metaphor for caution and warning. My work looks joyous, but it has a dark side. I want people to question why it has to look so bright and tropical. Flowers are often brightest when they are about to wither. 
I named this installation asymmetric arrangement because it is asymmetric. It is unbalanced as is our word right now. The next one is leaks. This installation is just one part of the leaks project that was installed in a hallway about two years ago. A hallway can be the liveliest place in the universe. Think of a, a school hallway between classes or an alleyway in the center of a city. People with brimming minds filled with various emotions, secrets, and ideas are always working through those hallways. Between those people who walk the halls, there are vibrant relationships and connections. Some of those emotions might be pushed down, piling up in the shadows of the mind. Some of those relationships might be kept secret, hiding deep underneath the surface. But sometimes there is a leak, and all those hidden feelings, secrets, ideas, and relationships burst through. My artwork is an open expression of those leaks, of the emotions, the secrets, and the paradigms that Hoei struggled to contain. The installation took place at Target Gallery, which is in the Torpedo Factory, a huge art center that has several artists worked through its hallways to get to each other's studios. The Torpedo Factory also has an interesting history as a naval munitions factory and government storage facilities for congressional documents, artifacts from the Smithsonian, Nazi trial records, all things that someone would have wanted to keep secret or hidden. So I thought this piece would be exciting in that particular space. Now let's look at the transplant series. As I mentioned previously, humans think they can make a perfect ordered setting for plants, but they aren't aware that they hold the power to manipulate temperature, sunlight, water, whatever organic variables plants rely on to thrive. So when humans invented settings such as incubators, clutches, and greenhouses, they started using this power to formulate the recipes for how and when plants should be grown, how they should look, how they should taste, how they can be used. But you can't grow a natural plant in an unnatural environment. Humans fail to understand that. Instead of using this power to spur natural and organic growth, humans use it to select and breed only certain plants, the plants that please them and their guests with outer beauty and aesthetics. A supposed natural setting slowly became a corrupt chamber of manipulation used by humans to tamper with nature. And this tampering resulted in the monstrous entities you see in this series. I named these sculpture pieces the transplant series because they reflect plants that have been taken from wildlife and transplanted in those chambers of manipulation. The final one is Minnewaska Pine Tree. The Minnewaska State Park in New York is one of my family's favorite trails. In late April of 2016, a wildfire of unknown origin burned over 2,000 acres of the park and its nearby woodlands. Containing the fire took nearly a week of effort from over 300 local and state responders. The park has historically experienced several wildfires, so its ecosystem has adapted to fire over time. Much of the vegetation at the park responded positively in the wake of the fire. Trees and animals have grown back and repopulated the burnt area. And every time I visited the park, I would be surprised to see saplings growing between the burnt tree trunks. That's where I got the inspiration for this installation. 
Watching the pine trees regenerate the park, I reflected on how nature can be so vulnerable and fragile, but also same time strong and recoverable. It reminded me of a book I used to read to my daughters, Dr. Seuss's 1971 book, The Lorax. The Lorax is a creature who speaks for the trees and protects them. And he often talks about how capitalism and human desire have conquered nature. For this installation, I used discarded wood, artificial colors, and steel and plastic pipes. I hope you enjoy my exhibition at Target Gallery. Thank you so much.